Cosworth? What's wrong? Now we're gonna have Cosworth in there with us once again. Yes, followed by flashes, lightning flashes, sounds of explosions. We're uh, trying to get confirmation. What? We seem to have lost what contact with our affiliate stations. Oh, no. We do have, we do have coming in. That's, um, confirmed reports, I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. My God. Oh, my God. We, we need to get to the vault. Now! Hey, yeah, this is Tasing Animation to you. Welcome back to Fallout 4. For this run, I'm going to be doing it, can I beat all as a minute man? Rules of the run are pretty simple. I can use any armor with the minimum use. I can have any companion with me at any time. Because Preston can wear power armor, I can wear power armor. I'll allow it, so I won't use it that much. And no fat man launcher allowed. So this is my first time, I think. I can't remember. But I have to get the rad roaches, like I have to trap them. And I actually think I did pretty good. Like, it wasn't too difficult, but then after that, you kind of see you have to crouch down here and wait until it says hidden before you can grab the pit boy, because I learned you can't grab the pit boy while the game considers that you're in combat. Bro, now this scientist pit boy, well, he's kind of dead, so he doesn't need it anymore. So, uh, finders keepers, bozo, I gotta use this thing. This thing's gonna be really good for the rest of the run. Would the pit boy technically break the run because it's not on a Minuteman corpse? Well, I kind of need it to play the game, so I don't think so. Okay, so my special stats are uh, 5 in strength, 2 in perception, 5 in endurance, 3 in charisma, 8 in intelligence, 5 in agility, and 1 in luck. It shows 4 here because I'm going to grab the new special book in Sanctuary to improve that stat. Next thing on the list is I see sunlight, which is like something your average Apex Legends player has never seen before. I kind of just roasted the entire Apex Legends community, but I don't really care. Next up, I team up with Codsworth and become pest control, but because I don't have a weapon, I kind of just let Codsworth roast him alive with his flamethrower. And yeah, this is pretty fun just grabbing crap as Codsworth does all the work. Like, I get behind this. What about Conquer, sir? Sure. Now that I made it to Conquer, I quickly run up to where the Museum of Freedom is, and I grab those fusion cells, the laser musket, the athletic outfit, and that green rag hat. And I make sure to notice what it is, because that's the gear I'm going to be having so far. And by the looks of it, it's absolute garbage. Like, I think I only have, like, two defense total. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? I'm, like, literally not even a damage sponge. I'm gonna get one-shotted by all these raiders, so I need to hit some serious level-ups. This is my fit, and I don't think it's that good of a fit. Okay, so I decided going to this ceiling is the best around. The raiders are incredibly basic. I barely took any damage against these losers. I quickly ignore Preston. I'll get back to him. I don't have ammo. And I decided to help the 10 men at Cambridge Police Station. Because he can help me get a lot of ammunition. And I put some points into luck training. So I can pick up, I think it's Scrounger for more ammunition. And then yeah, we're going to go head up to Arcjet. Basically, Archer was just a big boom. Things that go boom. And Paladin will be fine. He has power armor. Archer left me with about 500 shots. So I take this time to upgrade the laser musket. Because it's kind of bad. But now it's kind of good. Like, check this model out. I can go up to four cranks. And I have a tiny little side on it. This is pretty epic. The great green jewel of the commonwealth. Oh great, I have to deal with Piper again. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This is probably one of the worst interactions in Fallout 4. Straight up. I hate this so much. 
Because Piper's like, oh, you some traitor from Quincy and Mate, don't not let me in now, loser. And I'm like, bro, Piper's just a non, has no rank in Diamond City. Piper's just being bad. But after that, I go and grab the railroad quest after talking to some guys, like the, oh, follow the freedom trail. And I also make sure to talk to Ellie to grab Nick Valentine's location. Because I'm going to need that eventually. Stop right there. You went through a lot of effort to arrange this meeting. But before we go any further, answer my questions. Unlike most Fallout 4 YouTubers, I don't instantly wipe out the railroad. I actually need them to get a ballistic weave to upgrade my piece of trash armor. So they'll be staying around a while longer than most playthroughs people do. Hope you didn't mind the reception. When you tango with the Institute, you gotta be careful when someone new gets on the dance floor. Me and Deacon then do an epic team up like I find him out by Lexington, we clear out the switchboard real easy. And now I'm a railroad member, so that's cool. I hope. My first job as a railroad agent is to help this synth boy get back to his, like, house or something, because apparently he lost the keys. Like, bro, I don't want to have to find the keys for you. Just figure it out. But first, I gotta clear these raider scum of, like, his living space or something, because apparently they decided to pick not a cool location to lose your keys. Anyways, this kid named High Rise shows up, and he doesn't even, like, use the railroad signs. So anyways, I go along with him, and we drop off the synth back at his house. And then this High Rise guy is like, yeah, my house is your house. But I'm like, Sanctuary is a much better house than this place. I'd rather live with a Prest than synths. So that's just how it be. I'm hopping back on the main story, because I need to. And I need levels anyways. The trigger man went down super easy. Looks like one rank in the toughness is just enough to not get absolutely destroyed by them. Yeah, Dino, that man was a joke. Like, I've never had a Dino fight go much smoother than this. Pretty crisp right there. And then now we get to meet, like, literally the best character in Fallout 4. Nick Valentine. Oh yes, that is not a hot take. Nick Valentine is the best. Skinny Malone and his gang were ultimately bested by the power of friendship. Yeah, I had to pull out friendship here, because this was a pretty difficult fight. But it looks like anime taught me well for sure. Now that Nick Valentine has been saved, he asks me, okay, what? why'd you come save me anyways? So I tell Nick that this guy named after a cereal brand is trying to kidnap my potato-looking kid. Like, no cap, Nick. This is for real, for real what actually happened. Now, I decide to ditch Nick to help the Minutemen, which is probably a bad decision now that I'm looking back on it, because Preston didn't need my help. Well, I actually know he did because he's a basic little boy, so maybe this was a good decision. I don't know. But little Preston is like, okay, put the fusion cooler in the power armor. And I had to do some quick Google searching, and because Preston Garvey can wear power armor, it's allowed in the run, but I'm probably only going to use it like one more time. His power armor is OP, so yeah, I grabbed the power armor, and this Deathclaw did not stand a chance. Like, I used to classic airbender tactics, avoid and evade, and that's how I won this fight. Like, Preston didn't even land a shot. Like, he was trying to take my kill at the end, but I could not let Preston get kill credit. No, 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 that's not how we roll around here. Preston does not get kill credit. He is a Minuteman, but he's my NPC quest giver. He's not my companion. There's a difference. I've literally been doing this the entire run, but I'm going to be hopping around again. I'm back to the railroad to do the Mercer Safe House quest. And this quest is so easy. They're just like, yeah, go to Starlight Drive in and drop down two turrets. I'm like, bro, this is so simple, railroad. Why are your quests so easy? But, you know, I like it. Because after this, I get that jackpot mission from Pam, and that was not easy, not easy, but we made it in the end. That's just always how it is. Now that I have Ballistic Weave unlocked, I learned that I can't upgrade my athletic robe, which is the main thing I'm wearing. So I need to go find more Minutemen gear out in the wasteland. So I had to go to the Reddit for some help. 
But there's like, there's another dead minimum in Concord near the church up along one of those houses to the left side when you're exiting it. So I went there next. Now that I have the new gear, I learned it is upgradable and I quickly upgrade it and holy crap is ballistic weave good. Like I don't have any radiation resistance, but I'm like, what the heck? Was ballistic weave always this good? So, I think I don't even need armor rank 3. That might be a bit overkill, but I might still go for it anyways. Now that I'm all geared up, I feel confident in taking the castle. I meet up with Preston and friends, and basically, this is how the start of the fight went down. It shall go into war. It is likely that we go to our doom. We did not go to our doom. Like, these guys were easy. Maybe it's because I have over 160 defense. I don't know. But these guys barely made a scratch. It's, I'm like the Black Knight from Monty Python. Tis but a scratch. And yeah, the Meyer Lurk Queen went down pretty easy too. So there wasn't really a lot of problems here. Since the castle's been taken back, I now have all the settlements I need to beat the game, so we're good with that. So I can now back onto the main quest, meaning I need to go track down Dogmeat, wherever I left him. I find Preston and Dogmeat, and we head out to Fort Hagen, because, like, what can go wrong? But apparently Ballistic Weave is, like, really good. So the sits do no damage. It's like that one TF2 meme, like, <laughs> I'm bulletproof now, boys. Oh, I'm ready. Question is, are you? Come over here. Check out my new shoes. They're the brand new. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, buckle some more. Five, six, Nike kicks. Ooh, that is so fire. Yeah, Preston was not impressed with one, two, buckle my shoe from the Brotherhood, but we gotta move on from there. Nick and Piper are like, hey homie, you know that brain piece? What if you go to the memory den and get it checked out? And I'm like, yeah, well, let's do that. So me, Preston, Gravy, and Nick all head out to the memory den. Like we're some kind of three amigos or something. Well, now it's time to invade Kellogg's head like some, some kind of mole rat or something. Like, huh? But basically, the simple explanation is, is that the Institute uses teleportation to get around. And I'm like, okay, I could have probably figured this out if I watched a sci-fi movie. But yeah, this is fine. simple look uh, oh virgil why is this guy like a super mutant anyways i get the deeds from him after using my very good three charisma yeah so he tells me how to build the stuff like he gives me the plans but first he's like you need to kill a courser and i'm like well kellogg was basic and virgil said a courser is just a, like one step up from kellogg so this is gonna be a very easy fight i already know it after doing the mission at the castle, I learned that Minutemen have access to rocket launchers. So goodbye, Courser. Boom. Yes, I'm finally raining down explosive ordnance among these people. Let's go. Virgil thought I was a basic loser, but he's like, wait, you killed the Courser? You're actually kind of pog. So he hands over the plan, and he's like, you're going to need a lot of big brain to build this. And while my brain's not that big, I know someone who has a massive brain, mainly because of their plot armor. Sturge's brain is so massive that he's able to figure out what Virgil's toddler handwriting looked like. And we managed to build the machine. So now it's time to go to the Institute. Tracking RF. And... Got it. 
Hold on to your butt! The first thing I do when I get to the Institute is immediately commit some crimes. Well, just one crime. But basically, I entered into this holotape and I took all of their data. Oh yeah, the Institute? And now that I have their database, I don't need to be here anymore, so I just dip, basically. The Institute leader learns I took all of his personal data, including his internet browsing history, and he sends an army after me so he can reclaim that. To restore the bomber, to fly the open skies in armored safety, bringing high explosive ordnance upon ignorant savages. I meet up with Preston after the fight, and it's time we do that counter attack. And now, Sturge just has this big brain plan. Basically, Preston will rally the entire army like that one scene from Phineas and Ferb. And then, we all go in and do the most epic attack you ever did see. I take the vents like the sussy imposter I am, and I break inside the Institute very easily. Like these vents aren't even that guarded. Like, huh? Anyways, I make my way quickly to the terminal and I relay all the boys in. Yes, all the boys. Everyone in the Minutemen is coming to this one location for the most epic fight of the century. Before we can blow up the reactor, Father has one request of me. I get him a grimace shake. Apparently he really wanted to try one. So, uh, here you go, man. Yo, bro, this is so fire, bro. The grimace shake is epic. After Father enjoyed his grimace shake, I quickly drop a fusion pulse charge on the reactor, and I have Sturgis pull us all out of there via the teleportation, and we blow this place up, proving that yes, you can beat Fallout 4 with only weapons and armor from Minutemen.